All right, in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to determine the equation of a quadratic when you're given its x-intercepts. So in order to do this, we, we have to work closely with what's called factored form of a quadratic. This is just another form that a quadratic can take. Usually we get factored form by factoring a standard form quadratic. So we're gonna work with the, the x-intercepts or, or the roots or solutions. We're gonna come up with an equation quadratic. As in, in all forms of a quadratic, the a value refers to the direction of opening. It also tells you the stretch or compression factor. And the, the r and the s values here, these are your x-intercepts, which you're gonna be given all the problems that we're looking at in this video. Okay, so families of quadratics. The reason we're referring to families of quadratics is in all of these examples, you aren't given enough information to determine the a value. And if you don't have the a value, you essentially have an infinite number of possible quadratics. And I'm going to get into that in more detail in this example. But we're being told here that we have two x-intercepts that are 1 and 3. So what we want to do is we want to take our factored form expression and we want to plug our x-intercepts in for r and s. So when we do that, we end up with this expression here. Notice that we have x minus 1 and x minus 3. The sign in the expression is opposite to your x-intercept. And the reason for that is if I were to set this equal to 0 and solve for x and just perform a little bit of algebra work, I'd end up moving this negative 1 over to the other side and it would end up being positive 1. And you can check that on your own. But this would be our expression that has an x-intercept of 1 and an x-intercept of 3. So notice I don't have enough information to get this a value. If I were to just graph the family of quadratics that this expression represents, you'd see something like this. But what I did is I plugged in 1 for a, and you can see that that's the purple graph here, passes through 1 and 3. The red graph, I just plugged in 2 for a, you can see it still passes through those x-intercepts, but we've got kind of a like a stretched, thinner parabola. And if you look at the last one, the blue graph, I plugged in 4 for a, we've got an even thinner, more stretched parabola. They all go through the x-intercepts, and these are all part of the family of quadratics that this expression represents. All right, so another quadratic passing through 0 and negative 2 as the x-intercepts. I can follow the same process and just substitute in my x-intercepts. Notice that I have a minus minus here, so this is actually going to turn into a positive. Remember, our, our general factored form expression says x minus r and x minus s. So we're going to subtract a negative. And if we just kind of clean this up a little bit, x minus 0 is just x. x minus negative 2 is going to be x plus 2. You could write that in this way. So a similar situation as before. I don't have enough information to determine what my a value is, but I could just kind of sub in random values for a just to see what the family of quadratics would look like. So I've done that here. I subbed in 1, negative 1, and 2. As you can see, all of these quadratics pass through the x-intercepts of 0 and negative 2. But again, I'm not able to determine which quadratic I'm referring to here without my a value. Just one more quick example. Being given one x-intercept of 5, you have to think with parabolas, it's not possible to only cross the axis once, but it is possible to touch the axis. And when this happens, we have what's called a double root. So we have two x-intercepts, but they happen to both be 5. So we sub in 5 into our factored form, and we end up with this expression here. And the same situation arises where I've got a whole family of quadratics, but you can see that they just touch the x-axis at 5, and that's our double root. What I want to do now is actually determine the exact equation of a quadratic. And in order to do that, we need to be given a point in our, in our problem. So it's not enough just to be given the x-intercepts. Like this problem here, you can see I'm given the x-intercepts of 3 and negative 3. I also need a point. Okay, the reason for that is if you take a peek at our, our expression here, right, I've already substituted in our x-intercepts, we do not have our a value. And I can't solve for this a value because I've got too many unknowns. You can see I've got, I've got two x's and a y, I still, and I don't have enough information to get this a. But since we're given a point, remember points are written as x comma y, I could substitute my x and my y into this expression and just perform a little bit of algebra and rearrange to solve for a. So that's what I'm going to do in this, in this example here. Okay, so the first thing I've done, so I've taken my x value and my y value, and I've substituted it in for x and y. And I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to add 3, I'm going to subtract 3, and I'll end up with something like this. Okay, now this is just a, sort of like a one-step algebra problem where I have to solve for a. Okay, if I multiply these two numbers, I've got negative 4. Solving for a, all I have to do is divide both sides by negative 8, and I'll end up with a nice a value. Okay, well now that I have my a value, I can 100% nail down the quadratic I'm referring to here. 
This quadratic has x-intercepts at 3 and negative 3, has an a value of negative 1 half. This is the quadratic that I'm referring to right here. Okay, so when you're doing these sorts of problems, just make sure you finalize your problem by writing out the exact equation that we're referring to. You can see this graph is not a family of quadratics like we saw in these last couple examples. This is one specific parabola. Okay, now if we look at our x-intercepts. This thing passes through negative 3 and 3. Does it pass through the point negative 1, 4? It certainly does. That point's right here. Okay, so we need that point to sort of nail down our quadratic. If we didn't have that point, you can just imagine there'd be an infinite number of parabolas, sort of, for instance, this one here happens to pass through both x-intercepts, but does not pass through negative 1, 4. So that would be a different quadratic. Okay, so that's sort of the process that's involved here. So I'll look at another example quickly. So I apologize for this horrible non-parabolic shape, but just use your imagination for a moment and just pretend that this is a parabola. Okay, you can see here on the graph that I have x-intercepts at negative 5 and 1. The x-intercepts have a y-coordinate of 0. Remember, that's a property of x-intercepts. So I'm going to start by just substituting in our, our x-intercepts into our factored form expression. And I'm going to perform the same steps. I'm going to substitute in my given coordinate of 2, comma, 14. Remember, this is an x, comma, y. Right? So that's very important. I'm going to substitute those in. 2 and 5 I'll add together. I'll subtract 1 from 2 and end up with a situation like this. And again, I've got a simple algebra problem where all I have to do is solve for a. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. I get my a value of 2. And don't forget, it's very important that we resubstitute our, our a value back into our initial expression. And, and you'll notice that I, I don't substitute my point in. I don't substitute x and y in. I leave those open. This gives me a nice uh, factored form expression for this parabola. Okay, so that's really the end of this video tutorial. I'm hoping that this helps you as you explore quadratics and determine the equation given x-intercepts. All right, thanks for watching.